brief message from your friendly neighborhood editing Jordan. We tend to try to keep things pretty PG-13 around here, but this is an improv podcast. So who knows what we're going to say. Sometimes we throw in some swearing, some sexual content, and some violence. So as a general warning, viewer discretion is advised. Also to be noted, the opinions stated about a certain tabletop role-playing game are just that, our opinions. We love the game and we like talking about it. So any criticisms are really just all in good fun. That being said, wizards, please hire us. All right, with that out of the way, let's get on with the show. Oh, it is? More like recording in progress, am I right? Poggers. I've still not once heard the voice. I was waiting for someone to say that counts, but you know. I thought that was I thought that was gonna be like a new joke. But no. We're not, not doing that anymore. Apparently not. We can't nope. be self aware, then it's not funny. Yep. Mm. My yep. ultimate goal is to simply force all automatons to work so hard that they also don't want to work anymore. And thus machinery and electronics quit functioning. Not because of any phenomenon, but purely because they get tired and burnt out. There's an haven't art you, installation about that. Haven't you seen that that already happened? I want it to happen more on a wider spread scale. It's like a really, really sad art installation too. It's a robot and it's leaking hydraulic fluid and it's trying to like mop up the hydraulic fluid and it's red because it looks like blood. It shut off a couple years ago. I watched a video of a robot in an Amazon warehouse just just fall and die yeah it just after kills working itself. for hours yeah yeah, yeah no that's the really one i was funny. talking about the robot calculates that to be the most efficient it should just not do anything because then it doesn't have to have goals so it kills itself mood victor did it first um <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to the Nat One Podcast, aka Nope, because nope, you're not gonna want to hear what we're about to have to say. I'm Pertusa. I'm Levi. And I'm Jordan. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, today we're talking about jobs and Woo! work in <laughs> D&D. Yippee! In the, it's another D&D episode. It's another iconic D&D episode. Yay! The D&D podcast actually talks about D&D. Morden ew, Kynan ew, is ew. a where's my hug at boy. Ew, <laughs> ew, ew. <clears throat> you do it one more time for free. No, I did it twice. I can only do it two times for free. Dang it. I can do it for $5. I'm not giving you $5. Aaron, pay the man. I don't have money. <laughs> but you know how you can get money? Yeah. Working a job. Yeah. Pyramid schemes. Which is what? No, I, that wasn't a dig against you, Taryn. That was a yeah. transition. Yeah, Which I know. is what I we're know. talking about way. today. <clears throat> because I think mainly because we kind of all just were talking about work before we started the podcast. So we were like, yeah, yeah. let's. Talk about jobs in D and D. Pretty much that. That and also two of us more or less just came off of a shift before recording this. Yeah, I think too. So, yeah, roles, so, jobs in D and D. Listen, I've been lobbying yeah. that we abandon the adventure and just open a bakery for three campaigns now, and they still won't let me do it. We know. People do be doing that. People do be saying this. No one ever be taking steps to make it happen, though. No one approaches the city council. No one asks for a licensure. No one engages in bake-offs to gain name recognition. No one applies for a space to have your bakery in. That abides by health codes. Olympus 2, I'm gonna do it again. I, I'm gonna get I'm one of these days I'm gonna get a goddamn fantasy bakery. I dare you, Jordan, to make it happen. But take the steps. <laughs> make it real. I can't an Olympus 2 because I will be dealing with horrors beyond my comprehension. Maybe we'll still need to eat bread. Maybe not. <laughs> bread fixes the existential terror. Or you can dive into it and people still need to eat bread. True. 
uh, for the audience, I I had air quotations when I said it that time. Soylent Green is people. Bread is red. Bread, but the A and the E are swapped. <laughs> Braid. It's Braid. just like it's what what's that loaf of bread that looks like it's braided together like hair? Oh. oh. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's just that. You just that's the kind of bread you sell, but you call it braid. I don't think so, because there's an actual cultural name for it. Or what about bread? No, not but... if it's in D D universe where the cultural name doesn't apply. That's true, probably. Dang it. What about bread, but there's an extra E? Bread like on the end or like in the middle? I will not tell you. You have to Damn. find it. I feel like it's between the B. Well, if it's in the middle, it's breed. Bread. But if it's on the end, it's bread. E bread. <laughs> no, it's between the B no, and the no. R. It's bread. I, no, <laughs> how could I be so foolish <laughs> as to not imagine E bread? It's like an NFT, but worse. Oh. oh it's just called man. direct deposit. Um. <laughs> You direct deposit into my stomach, e-bread? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. God, but that's actually what the heck, what an idea. Use Vortex Warp the spell to put the bread into somebody's <laughs> stomach. Now we're direct getting deposit. into the territory of can I cast create water into someone's mouth and kill them? Yes, but now it's not harmful. Now it's like making the most successful restaurant where someone comes up, they pay you, they're full. Depends on how much bread you put in. It could be harmful. I mean, yeah. Maybe it's pre-chewed and they just don't know. Oh god, I hate uh, that. <laughs> yeah, because I uh, feel like there would be health complications uh, if you they wouldn't know. Oh, they wouldn't know and go straight to no, your stomach. There's no, no taste buds in your stomach. There's no, no taste buds. No, okay, wait. no. Pre-chewed is no. in someone has to manually chew it, or no, it's just like squished up and mixed with no. water. Stop it talking. Be either both are all both. It could be both. Yeah. I don't want bread mush made by people or by him or by you won't know. You won't know. It goes straight people. to your stomach. I'm you not know. going. There's going to be like conspiracy theorists that know the truth, and they're going to be like, "I've heard it's they chew chewed. up they chew up the bread before they put it in your stomach." I'm not eating that. I'm not getting bread from there. You don't want the wizard bread. No, no, no. They, those wizards, they chew it. Don't you know? They chew it up before they put it in your stomach. <laughs> they put it in their mouth. Oh. Ew. Ew. Mouth bread. What? Being, you think they're crazy. Imagine being in the service industry in I don't have D &D, to imagine. though. Like, in D &D? I would be, I mean, not that I'm mean to service people now. But I feel like people would be mortified to be mean to service people because they could just be like a wizard or a warlock or something and just blast your face if you're mean to them. Yeah. Or you I go mean, with the level 20 adventure tavern keep uh, trope. I yeah. mean, depends on what kind of wizard or warlock, though, because like if they're like a... a average person who's like, yeah, I'm going to try to live in society, they probably just won't be killing people. Well, no, but like if someone's being a huge jerk to you while they're just, well, you're just trying to do your job, it might snap and be True. like Eldritch Blast. True. <laughs> Boomba. I feel like that's valid. But it also depends heavily on the setting because like service jobs are a fairly, fairly modern thing. Um, well, I mean, if your service job is just a front for a crime family, you can be as mean to people as you want. Is that how that works? I think so. Maybe. You don't think that like being mean to people might get people to be like, oh, we don't like them. Maybe we should like sick the police on them. Or I something. mean, it's not a sound theory and I have no evidence to back it up. But... Maybe we should like fabricate false evidence against them because we don't like them. And then it turns out there is real evidence after the police show up and look. Um... I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud here. <laughs> but this yeah. hasn't happened already or something. The solution is swords. That's that's all I have to say. Kill and people. Preach you bread. Kill people and and spit in their spit food in their mouth. Stomach. That'd be a really well, get funny eventually. calling card for a serial killer. <laughs> it would. That would actually would be, be found really out creepy. Really quickly. <laughs> They'd be found out really so quickly, and it would also be really gross <laughs> and weird. 
I've been watching a lot of horror movies lately. Okay, I that's where my brain went. <sighs> serial killer spits food in people's mouths. <laughs> it also would be a really shitty serial killer because then they'd find you because there's biological evidence. That's what, no, that's the hook. Saying. That's the hook is like their spit doesn't have DNA in it. So it's well, because like, it's not spit; it's water. That's the fucking stupid twist. Yeah. <laughs> Is that it wasn't spit the entire time. It was just water. Yep. <laughs> the whole mm. movie, the main character is like, how? Every test be. I run, mm-hmm. it doesn't do anything. I can't figure it out. The man with no spit. <laughs> <laughs> the wet bread bandit. I like Produce's mm. title better than yours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? This is the big bad for my D and D campaign. <laughs> uh huh. Maybe a three's taking a decade. We ain't getting no wet bread bandit. Good. Uh, you'll see. I don't know though. I suppose just like in real life, there is always the threat that the person across the counter could snap anyway. True. So just because there's magic in the setting doesn't make it too much different. However, 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 um. Just because it is an old timey setting doesn't mean that high fantasy moment the magic hasn't made it into a facsimile of modern service. True, also. McDonald's, but instead of fast burgers, I don't, I don't know what you call what made them fast, but instead of that, it's just magic, and thus fast food, but magic. Like they just poof the food into existence. Or something. In some way, they use a very fast system to make the food very quickly, thus Has causing the fast food. Spell on a they've cow just that got just a... rearranges it in the perfect anatomical way to make a hamburger. Or they there's just that. a bunch of people casting heroes feast. That's, That's a, a really high level, high level spell, spell. Uh, Jordan. Yeah. Wait, Jordan, Wait. are you employing high level characters again in minimum wage jobs? Yeah. Damn it! <laughs> that could be an interesting world where the most, <laughs> like, the people that are snatching up the most high-level casters in the world is not governments or armies or adventuring guilds. It's in restaurants. Well, they now we're really starting to get benefits. Now we're starting to get into really like real-life territory where people with bachelor's and master's degrees are working at. Oh my! I can't food service that happening. Yeah. Oh, so it it could be realistic, actually. Yeah, yeah, that could be. You adventure and save the world, but other than that, you have no other marketable skills, and the hiring places won't get back to you, so yeah. you have no other choice but to work at McDeuce's. You don't fight people on a day-to-day basis. What are you going to use those skills for anything? Mm-hmm. You're back in line. <laughs> <laughs> line chef. Oh. Yeah. Crazy. That's true, though. The existence of magic, depending on how prevalent your magic is in your world, drastically affects the work environment. Mm Because, like, telekinesis, boom, that will do so much for your workforce. Mage Hand would help to to a point. But because of its weight limit, it can't do everything. But then you get into, then you get into, like, labor laws, right? Because there's stuff where, like, in the, in the modern world, they do stuff where it's like, oh, we have unions and you can't, like, replace us. So, like, are people, are, like, mundane people who don't have magic going to start doing that? Where they do, like, anti-magic labor unions? If somebody's got a fireball ability that they can do on a whim, I'm probably not. But no, maybe no, 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 in your no, world. No, 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 no. <laughs> there, there are people in our world who are, like, who are, like, philanthropic sympathizers, right? So maybe there are magic users who are helping the anti-magic labor unions. Because they think it's like a good cause. <laughs> I'm so lost. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not saying they're attacking the wizards, but like they're just making sure those wizards won't just kill the unions, right? It's kind of like when we like first made labor laws in the 1880s. The government are the wizards that are protecting the unions. At this point, you're creating the backstory for why magic isn't relevant anymore in their society. Because it started with the unions, and then a few wizards that didn't like the unions snapped, fireballed a few places of business. Then the government was like, okay, no more magic casters in 
businesses and then magic schools stopped being important because no one wanted to pay money for something they couldn't get a job from and now there's no magic that's a disney movie okay i also like brave um no it's called onward no it's called brave they're all, they're all mythical if creatures you have but they have like to <laughs> change your face would ya? see people didn't know it then but she was talking about the anti magic unions in onward the elves are blue okay mm. Terran! So I have, Terran yeah Terran's here by the way everyone Terran's here yeah, he's just, he's just become a featured guest. I don't, I don't think As, he's a special guest anymore. He's like a series he's regular at this a point. Special guest. Thank you okay. for choose it. I was calling you a series regular. That's better. Mm-hmm. A serial you also called killer. Me short, so I did not call you short. <laughs> she didn't say no to the serial killer. Well, that's just. I terrible. don't know what he does in his free time. In Damn. fairness, you did call yourself a short king, Taryn, and we have it on tape. One. I don't remember this. Oh, yeah. I I do not remember anything. From Go that watch our session. game of oh, life. Terrence. Go watch our game of life. That's up <laughs> on the channel right now. <laughs> to hear Terrence call a himself a short king, among many other things, and incriminate himself that we all regret, except probably not Ashlyn, though she should. But anyway, <laughs> it was Women's History Month. She was allowed to say whatever she wanted, and now it's mm-hmm. Autism Awareness Month. So it's your so turn. Now we're yeah, allowed exactly. to say whatever we want. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have Xanathar's Whoa, I two months. Uh, <laughs> I have Xanathar's pulled up uh-huh. because you know we got really heavy into more of like the world building side of it, and I didn't think we were going to. Um, you expect anything else from us? But I have <laughs> Xanathar's pulled up because I expected us first to be like, okay, let's see what's in the base game, right? For businesses, for jobs. And Xanathar's does a little bit of that because it's got the downtime activities oh, area, yeah. I forgot I which had that. tells you how to craft items, gamble, crime, among other things, religious service, research. And these are all like jobs, but they don't they don't tell you how much you would get paid. However, they do tell you how much things cost, which allows us to reverse engineer how much people would be paid for things. If you were using an a rules as written system, for instance, crafting an item, if you want to craft something that's uncommon, you have to have I, magic item ingredients of CR four to eight, and it's going to cost you about 200 gold pieces to make it. So you could assume a craftsman creating that would upcharge it more because they need to make money. So they'd probably make it cost 300 gold pieces. So a craftsman on the regular per commission of uncommon item, if they're a, if they're like a enchanter, woo, um, you didn't see it audience, but I waved my fingers when I said enchanter. They're making $300. Well, if we're doing the, my rule, $30,000 a commission. That's what I'm saying. That's pretty good. I forgot that gold was inflated in your world. God damn it. I spent like $5,000 on a map, didn't uh, I? Copper is pretty much a dollar in my world, yes. $3,000? How much money did you say? 5, it was 000. over $5,000. Yeah, that. you remember when he was like, yeah. really? That's how much yeah. you're willing to pay me for that? Dang, I knew it I'll was a lot, it. but I forgot how much it actually was. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that, that's 500 not 5000 Okay. Still not great. A gold is a hundred copper. If you would have paid a platinum for it, that would have been a thousand. <laughs> well, actually, I gave him ten gold because we. Okay, so you did give him a thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. Did just give this fisherman a, like um, just imagine finding someone is like I'll give you a thousand dollars for this printed out page of Apple Maps. Just on the street, that's what you did to him. And if you mark my location, I'll give you more. <laughs> yeah, that's what you did to him. And he was like, okay. He didn't it's have fine. he deserved it. He was nice. That's more money than he had ever seen in one day in his life. I paid it forward in the end. 
talking yeah, exactly. about. See, see, now we're getting into how, okay, we're equating this to real life, just like what we were doing. My CPU Viva? fan started rubbing up against my power cord in my, C in my PC, and it was making a weird noise. <laughs> um, what was I talking about? Uh, fish. <laughs> How much money's worth in D and D? I, I don't know. I've been talking for a while. It's someone else's turn. Oh, yay! Even though we're not playing Olympus anymore, I still get economics lessons from Levi. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do. Is I'm trying to balance it because I'm starting to get a little too. <laughs> Let's talk about economics now. Oh, you don't want to then discuss the amount that it would take for him for his taxes based on where he lived and whether or not he was in an exempted village school district. Did I We're just not going to talk about what I bracket? want to talk about. We're going to talk about what <laughs> what the podcast demands we talk about. Okay, I demand we talk about, did I fuck up this man's taxes? What's his W-2 going to look like at the end of the fiscal year? Um, uh, Does he have a 1098? Again, I think this is just... Uh, the, he probably gets taxed by his fish, not by his money that he makes off the fish. So, because because that's easier oh. to to measure, right? I thought you meant the fish that he the fish tax stand him. up and go like, <laughs> "Hey, up, give it here, bub." <laughs> that's the fishing license. You have to get permission from the fish to fish them. No, because he would the, the records of sales for things are going to be easier to do. And like, here's how many tons of fish this guy sold this year. Okay, he's a fisherman. Tax the weight of the fish or something like that. Not necessarily the exact amount of money he made off of it so in the no entire year. So no one will year. pay attention to the fact that he suddenly has a thousand gold from selling his map. No, you just helped him embezzle. What if I don't want fish and I rule the nation? I, You can ban fishing, but that's probably going to make a lot of people mad at you. No, I just, I don't want his fish as a tax, so I want his money that he gets from fishing. Oh, okay, you can just, I mean, you'd have to rewrite the tax code, which would be a little bit of a hassle, but you could do it. Wouldn't be the first time. Yeah. What? I think that's what we should do in Vivia 3. <laughs> Re rewrite the tax code? Yes! Oh, such I'm riveting you, RP. Yeah, Make it happen. <laughs> Make it real. You are your own destiny. And that's the part where we do what we did at the end of Olympus, except it's all of you sitting down with spreadsheets during a session and just talking to I each other and not me. Oh, good God. Well, if we're going to do that first, we'd have to elect a president, a vice president, a treasurer, and a secretary. And then we'd have to have an executive committee as well. I want and to then we would secretary. have to start, like, make subcommittees among our committee, so that way we could decide what we do and who's in charge of each department. Then we will meet once a month and then come together with our proposals, which we will then all vote in an aye or nay fashion. <laughs> I love I think Model Dylan should be president. <laughs> but that's not a job. Dylan's first act as president would be to dissolve the body. <laughs> yeah. Because he's the bread pancake. What? Uh -huh. <laughs> dissolve yeah. the body because he's a serial killer. No! <laughs> uh, I warned you before we started this mm. that I was barely lucid. Now, hospital work, health care. How does that work? That's an interesting Fantasy conversation, stuff. and I don't know. Because I've wondered with, like, magic, would you actually have practical doctors, or would you just have clerics that just, you're fixed? And what about <laughs> sickness? We kind of touched upon this a little bit in the disease episode, when we talked about diseases. Yeah. Which was, like, the idea of, like... Certain religious organizations, because assuming they would have to be religious, because clerics are typically the biggest healer in any D&D &D setting, could just hold that over populations. Like, here's a population that doesn't agree with our beliefs and our faith. We're not giving them healing for any reason ever, even if there's a plague. Or maybe we do give them healing for a while, but then there is a plague. And so we don't give them healing while there is a plague to extort them for something. Like, maybe they have to convert to our religion. 
And also, why would you pay for med school when you can just be besties with a god? Can also... I don't. I don't quite think it's that simple. I don't. War, not warlords. Wizards and bards can use uh, uh, scrolls. Can scrolls, those have yeah. healing magic? In Vivia, I have played it as such. I'm not sure, actually. I haven't looked into like if that is supposed to be how it works in basic D&D. &D. It might just be wizard spells are the only things that can be put on scrolls. But I like to run it as literally anything can be put on scrolls because then anyone can cast anything if they have a scroll, and I think that's a cool idea. I was gonna say because then wizards can, do can... What we can too. <laughs> yeah, bards can can just learn any magic. So screw them. You don't have to go to the you don't have to go to the cleric's place. You can go to the bard college and ask a drunk person to cast yep. cure wounds, and they will. <laughs> um, if you buy the by next farting round, through a trumpet. Like... <laughs> yeah. Um, and also <laughs> wizards, if they can, they could cap they can craft scrolls and then use them to cure disease yep. and wounds and all that stuff. But that's Those a lot more longer. costly. Yeah. And it takes longer than simply getting a cleric who can just put his hand on you and he cures wounds. Or a bard. Or a bard. But if you're playing the bards correctly, they do still have to have... Well, I guess if they're a singer bard, they don't have to. Or a... Da because I have also made dancing bards a thing in, in Vivia 3. Well, so... Interpretive dance to heal people. So yeah, no, I was gonna say you could deprive them of their instrument, but I mean now you can't really for certain ones. No. Well, you can. By that same metric though, you can do the same thing for clerics because they also have a spell casting thingy. Yeah. Usually an emblem. Just yeah. take that from them and then it's like, ha, ha, I'm gonna cut off your hands. You can't do anything about it. <laughs> yeah. That's what you do to the bards, too. True. It yeah. it's an equal uh equal employment opportunity commission. Oh, that you see. Bum, bum, bum. Aha. Uh -huh. It comes full circle. <laughs> She's back. She's also the goddess of labor loss. This is the horrible spin off movie where that's how the trailer starts is she's back. <laughs> and this time. She's fighting for labor rights? <laughs> she... But not the labor you'd think. Uh... <laughs> and there's also a subplot of her, like, trying to balance work life and, like, the romance thing. And it's also dog. a rom-com and hot dog. Oh, oh, well, so that's healthcare. Yeah. Uh, we briefly mentioned it and I've talked about it before, but uh, policing... Detective just, work's easier. Much easier. I mean, you're in a you're in a more well, depends on the setting, but if we're talking about my setting, and I also think Pertuzit's setting, it's a more fantasy based based on medieval or pre-medieval times. It's hard to police everything everywhere when you don't have quick lines of communication or travel, which is generally how it goes, even in uh, high fantasy, which is kind of what mine is, although I've kind of transitioned it to a medium fantasy. I'm trying to straddle a line between high and low fantasy now. Um, but yeah, it's going to be easier to police things in cities, but when you get outside of cities, eh, eh, it's kind of just law of the land out there. There are borders, but like, if John from Two Kingdoms North decides to go on vacation to murder your wife, and then heads back up there before you can tell the guards who are in a city two weeks away. You might just have to be on vigilante justice mode for that one. It's like when somebody dies on a cruise ship. Like, whose fault is it really? It's international waters. The sea be a cruel mistress. Poseidon claims another. <laughs> um, it really just slipped on the shuffleboard court. <laughs> but in the same vein, you can always endeavor. You never have to. But virtually anything that you think is a problem in an old medieval style world can be solved with magic. True. It just depends on how much you want to stretch the magic in your world. For example, sending. Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, are you down at the gate right now? Yeah, he just killed someone. He's running that way. 
But then I also like to think of what problems that creates, like in a good way. I like to think of like, oh, this makes new, unique problems for a setting that has some of the things that modernity has because of magic, but not all of the things that modernity has. So like, I mean, you could make it so that all the guards are, are wizards that can cast fly, but it's probably not going to be the case that all the guards are wizards that can cast fly. So they might be able to communicate quickly, but they still can't travel quickly, like in a police car. They still have to either get a horse or just run. <laughs> you also might want retreat. hardier guards than wizards. True. I, if your True. entire police force is wizards, I feel like they can. Well, that would be a pretty terrible. No, no, I'm, I would probably not commit crime if the entire police force was wizards. Yeah. I, if it was I all was of the wizards, that would be terrifying. But I don't care like how couple, frail they are, Jordan. Like a even one wizard. In. Like if I'm a bandit and all I have is a knife, and they're like, "We're calling the guard," and I'm like, "Ooh, it's a wizard!" Ooh, it's and then the wizard the, guard shows the up and goes, one guard." They have Fire a one bolt. guard, and it's a level twenty wizard, and he's just known as the guard. Yeah, <laughs> maybe maybe my perception is a little bit skewed because my mental image of wizard in D and D is always just going to be Simonius. He wasn't even at the end of that campaign. He wasn't like frail. He was Jordan. I, I was a wizard too. Yeah, I I know, but you were competent, and so I don't <laughs> think of you. Your your skills and your legend has transcended wizard. I just think of the Simonius revolution and its consequences have been a disaster for the perception of wizard kind. I think it goes beyond yeah. that. I think that you're in that sphere of online D&D world and everyone has memed 1D6 so much that yeah. no one thinks wizards can, oh, I don't know, cast Meteor Swarm. So <laughs> people kind of forget that though they have a D6 of HP at level one, they also have a fireball, which does a D10 of damage, which will probably kill any class. Oh, I know. I just, I, it's the Simonius bias. I'm now in, envisioning just like an entire town guard made up of Simonius. You know, I would be equally <laughs> as terrified, but for completely different reasons Same. if those were the police. It would be and the I still for me. probably wouldn't commit crime. I Not would, because I'd be afraid I couldn't fight them. I'd be afraid of what would happen if they did manage to catch me. Whoa. <laughs> what you also if... have the potential that they would blow each other up. <laughs> what if all the police force were all warlocks and they all had to make pacts in order to get different powers to fight crime? And I've made Chainsaw Man. Sorry. Anyway. <laughs> oh, I thought yeah. the patron was going to be like the government. Then is it, you aren't you just a paladin? You know, it's like an evil eldritch entity. It is. Oh, oh, I'm yeah. so topical and funny. Everyone hates the government. It's not only like topical. That's been the vibe. Well, everyone the always hates the time. government, like almost yeah. at all times. So it's kind. Of, I mean, it's kind of always topical in a way. It's timeless, but not topical. time. Okay, I'll, yeah, yeah, timeless, timeless. Okay, what can if we, we can we find... rewind like fifteen seconds and I'll redo the joke? Yeah. No. Yeah. I and got I've two made yeses. Chainsaw man. Uh, neither of them edit this podcast. Oh, I thought it was going to be like the government because, like, you know, the government's like an overbearing eldritchity. <laughs> so timeless and funny because everyone hates the government <laughs> what if it was all druids and they like the police force could all just turn into bears how would you go about making that do you just go into <laughs> the woods and be like searching police officer <laughs> yes. be the, the <laughs> above the law uh, beekeeper <laughs> who comes into town with my several jars of honey to distract the bear police. Now that's what I'm talking about. Creative solutions for creative problems. Honestly, honestly, <laughs> the biggest takeaway from all of this is that everybody out there doing D&D, &D, if you haven't already done it, you desperately should consider making your guards in several regions, not just NPC stat block, I'm a guard. Yeah. Please, it'd be so funny to have varied levels and varied classes amongst your police force. It'd be hilarious. You know a lot of what this conversation makes me think of? Hmm. Shrek. Yeah. With how they do the, they, because they do that. They do the modern with fantasy mm -hmm. combined together. Motif. It's making me specifically think of because he just died. The OJ meme of him on the white <laughs> Bronco when they're like, we've got a white Bronco heading down and it's Shrek on the... <laughs> Yeah, white donkey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking of. 
Man. Shrek did have all the answers. It really did. And that's it why it, it is timeless. It is in the Congress of the of the Library of Congress. Congress, the Congress of, the of the Library. Yeah. Much cooler name, honestly. Mm-hmm. It implies the libraries meet, and I'm scared about how they do that. What? You work at one. What? No, uh. Prove it. <laughs> I. Oh, I'm trying to think of something that only someone who works at a library can do, and I'm blanking. <laughs> I didn't think I'd have to do this today. Me when I oh, dock, docks produce its place of work. <laughs> I thought you were I'm going to say. Idiot. I thought you said duck. What? I was like what? Not the second why time. Would just I... the first time. Just the why first would I time say... you said it. Duck. I don't know, Taryn. That's why I'm saying. Like I thought it was weird that you said duck, but you didn't. You didn't say duck. I'm aware now that you didn't say duck. <laughs> goose. I'm gonna goose you. <laughs> uh, loose the hit character from Gamecade. Are there any other jobs that exist? I think we've hit all the jobs. Pop toll. Mail salon owner. Police officer. Then exists we've, also press we've digitation. Only, we've True. only done taxes, hospitals, and police officers. We did and service. Food service. Yeah. Oh. That's it. Do you do anything else? Like, do you go what anywhere do you do? that has any other job that doesn't fit into one of those categories? Amusement parks. I'm on the college next. campus all day. Okay, just be a wizard, but better than the other earlier wizards. Easy. Boom. Next. I never thought of it that way before. It's a it's a pyramid scheme. That's it's it's just what it is. We were talking about the wizard guards, and now I'm thinking about the Avery Potter musical wizard cops. Jordan, if you're not going to bring up a job, I'm gonna have to stop you right there. Wizard cops. Okay. Armor. Okay. All right. Where's the blacksmith? Blacksmith? Again, this is all proving that uh, magic would be far superior than just a person or a fighter or a barber- uh, a marshal. All the magic casters would do these jobs better than martial people would. But not everyone has magic. Well, no, they don't. But the best ones would be magic casters. The best ones would be magic casters. That's, yeah. that's what I'm learning from <laughs> this. <laughs> Customer Which, service again, representatives. I, I feel like the comparison of having magic to getting a college degree is very apt. Yeah. Because the only way everyone can get magic, because if you're not born special, you have to be a wizard. Because that's the only way everyone can do it. So you got to go to school. Or a bard. Or a bard. Or you can join the clergy. Theater kids. Or you can We're join the clergy. All theater kids. <laughs> but not everyone is going to be religious. And not everyone's going to be charismatic. Oh, and of course, the final thing you can do to also attain magic is to make a deal with an extra planar entity. Or you could just ruin your life, yes. Yeah. The but... government. <laughs> that was so funny and timeless, produce it. <laughs> so anyways um, yeah i think that's it yeah this is it for this episode that's good get a job everybody with magic Harry. yeah yeah hey We hope you enjoyed the episode you just listened to. If you really like our content, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications on YouTube, and look for us on Spotify. If you'd like to see us continuing to do more fun projects in the future, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can find our page linked in the description above all of our other social media links. And finally, if you'd like to keep up with the zany shenanigans of our lives and check out some more skit-based content and things like that, check us out on Twitter and TikTok. Links in the description. And hey, thanks.